All right, we are live. It is The Rundown. It is Tuesdays, October 10th. It's presented by Oakheart. Chaps, what do you hit them with with an Oakheart? Tell me. Ginger and Oakheart, baby. We're about to film it up. My Uh, goodness. I like two. Chaps, in a moment of truthfulness in the trust tree, came to me and said, I just re-watched when I watched the presidential debate here. Is that when you were blacked out? No, it was my very first trip that I got here. I got off the plane at like 1.30 in the afternoon. Yep. And I immediately started crushing beers and drinking whiskey, like straight up. Straight. Mm -hmm. And you were like, I don't know how I didn't get fired. Yeah, like 5.30 in the afternoon, I was pretty drunk. The debate wasn't going on until like 7. Yep. I rewatched it for the first time this week. Somebody tagged me on Twitter. And I told you, I was like, I don't know how the fuck you didn't fire me. You were. I would have fired my ass twice. Uh Uh-oh. Fucking dispel on me, dude. No, this is a legitimate real-life wood. Okay. Can you give me a paper towel, guess? No. What, I want No. (laughs) No. That was wild. To say you were blacked out would be an insult to blacked out. You were loud, Sean. I mean, you were into, there's like blacked out, loud, Sean. You were up there, you know those meters that go up? It's like, get loud, get super loud. Get loud, Sean. Get loud, Sean, blacked out. (laughs) Uh-huh. So you, you slept in the podcast room that day, right? And I'm still like really self-conscious about it because first day chats became a thing. You guys accused me of it at the Super Bowl too. I was kind of drunk at the Super Bowl, yeah. like <laughs> wandering behind her in the practice yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now when I get here, the only thing I drink is seltzer water and like chocolate oh, milk. Chaps. Let it loose, man. Chaps, as far care. as I know, you don't get violent. Uh, that's when we draw the line. When like, no I've violent. gotten better. Loud Sean, yeah, hand up. <laughs> Loud Sean gets violent, cha- uh, challenges people to $10,000 basketball games. Throws, smashes glasses. Sm- smashes, throws beer cans at houses. So um, as long as you don't go, yeah. I don't oh, yeah. Like I do in that. the Super Bowl, he's throwing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, loud shot. Uh, yeah. The Rundown brought you by Movement Watches. MVMT.com slash rundown. 15% off, free shipping returns. Movement Watches start at just $95 at department store. Wait, yeah, Movement Watches start at $95. At a department store, you're looking at four to $500. Uh, now's the time to step up your watch game. Join Movement Watches. I don't know who the sales guy is who handles Movement Watches, but I do know this. Every time we do this, I said, love some Movement Watches and the sunglasses, there's, and there's it falls in coming. deaf ears. We've said the same thing. I've- I've been told that like that's all happening like n- next week or something. Okay, great. But there's Very, no reason why we haven't had it. My wife loves the sunglasses too. Mm. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, Jameel Hill, big news of the day. So Jameel Hill suspended by ESPN for two weeks for a tweet that criticized Jerry Jones. And Jerry Jones basically said he would bench any player who disrespected the anthem. Uh, where we believe Jameel Hill got in trouble, first of all, she was warned. As the entire company was warned last time she made news for her tweets, but where we, which was, I think she called Trump a Nazi, is that it? White supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. White supremacist, same. same thing. Semantics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this time she retweeted somebody who said, the only way to hurt people like ESPN is to boycott, or, or boy- like the NFL, the NFL yeah. is boycott advertisers like AT&T, other, other big companies that are also advertisers on ESPN. We discussed it on Barstool Radio. I think we had actually a superb discussion that we probably won't be able to recreate. It was so nuanced. <laughs> I, was I was just thinking that. I was like, this is going to suck compared to what we it, talked it about. It was a delightful school. conversation. It was. It was but wonderful. There are no, it's so hard to have winners and losers in this case or say who's right and who's wrong. Probably better to say it. Because Jameel Hill, has, I think she almost owes it to herself. And I think it's courageous by her to tweet her true feelings of how she feels about all the stuff going on. But... If you bring advertisers, and I think there's truth, the only way things people care about are the advertisers, but if, as the, I've said before, I sent an email to everybody at this company that said, hey, with all the political shit, I can't tell you not to tweet your personal opinions and stand up for stuff that you believe in, but I also reserve the right if it affects me or Barstool running our business we may have to reprimand you for that. So ESPN, I don't think, wants to punish her. They have no choice. I'm sure at t is calling up and saying, what is your girl doing here? And I'm sure Jamil Hill, Jamil Hill knew she was going to be punished. And she chose to do it anyway. So it's, it's just a tough situation. It's the world we live in. I don't think anybody's right or wrong. Uh, both entities are doing what they feel they have to do. Both entities are screwed, though, because... She's gonna. She obviously won't like specifically mention advertisers again. But if she really wants to like make a difference and kind of like what she said, the only way to like hit these people where it hurt is to do X, Y, Z. So like, if she's this passionate about it and this like into what she believes, I feel like she's gonna 
say something else that's going to piss the ESPN off. Maybe it's not direct advertisers, but she's going to be so passionate about it that like she's going to find herself back in this spot again. ESPN probably loves some of the exposure, but doesn't want anything that hurts their bottom line. Like there's just it's just this is going to keep happening. I mean, she grew up through ESPN by being a big time personality, making these big takes and doing all this, and now it's at a point where it's almost going to be out of control. Not that she's saying anything that she should be in by itself that is terrible or anything like that, but even if she backtracks and said, look, I shouldn't have brought the, our investors, our business side into it, she can't go backwards because now every time something happens and she says anything remotely political, that tweet is going to be brought back up. That whole stance is going to be brought back mm -hmm. up. It's going to be impossible for it to go away. She's got to move on from ESPN. Uh, every, th everything she says at this point will go viral. It'll be like so many retweets, so much exposure for things that maybe aren't even that inflammatory. Because she's not in the business where you can be a, a starting quarterback answer every single week, every yeah. single right. day. She has to give an opinion, and we already know where she stands. I don't think it's a lose. I think it's a lose situation for ESPN more than it is for Jameel Definitely. Hill. Because yeah. Jameel Hill is a star. She yeah. has now become kind of the face in a way. I, so I think her and Kaepernick now are like the most two singularly associated with all this movement. She's a star. So if ESPN says we, can't, we don't want to be in the political business, which by the way is, I'd say the same thing as Barstool. Like we're not in the political business. So eventually we may have to cut ties with this person. She's going to land on her feet probably in a big way somewhere because yeah. she, she is a star. She, didn't, she doesn't lose anything. Like the people who already didn't like Jamel Hill, it's not like, like, she didn't really gain or lose anybody by saying this. You know what I'm saying? Like, people, well, people already had their opinion formed of her. So it's not like... I, I mean, for me personally, I, I, like, she was wallpaper for me before any of this. I never, like, was... Now I am... Now you're taking, maybe not whether you're a fan or not, you're just interested in what she I'm, I'm interested in her take. Yeah, yeah and I right. think it's just like, you don't want to be in politics, but here we are. I mean, because of the current state of everything that's going on, everybody's in politics. You can't stick to sports anymore. It's not fucking possible. Right. Though. It's a no-win situation, in my mind... For ESPN. I mean, they get criticized for being too liberal. They suspend her now, all the uh, liberal or whatever. They're going to yeah. be like, oh, you stick. Right. It's like you, they just want to. This isn't. This is why they sent that. That. This is why they sent that email. Say, don't talk about this stuff because we don't want to be dragged into it. I don't it. think you can do that anymore. I, I mean, I, I feel like you can probably just say, don't fuck with our advertisers. But yeah, the rest I of the think time, that's the only thing yeah, that don't they can fuck do. with our Other bottom line. That, but if, you, if you're going to give people platforms, that's to, what you want. If you're going to give people platforms to give their takes, and politics is now interweaved with sports. You almost have to just let it happen. But I don't right. think it's a you know it's a it's a battle you can't win. But if Jamil Hill, like which I think she it, authentically right. believes is in every, she's not so do, she's yeah. not Clay Travising. No, no, no. It. She's, she's she's authentic passionate. and she's articulate and smart. So you have to do the advertisers because that's really the only thing anybody cares about. That's what I'm saying. So right. like if she really believes but what she, she says got, and she but does, she's got that out there now too. And there's going to be a legion of people who say that for her. Like yes. with the advertisers now. Yep. Since she said it once, she's not going to have to say it multiple times. You think that there'll, there'll be people who... Colin Kaepernick boycott? hasn't taken a knee in like a year. I don't think there'll be people who boycott, but what do I know? I mean, yeah, I... Yeah, like, you're going to be like, oh, Jamel Hill told me to go get rid of my yeah, iPhone. Yeah, well, I don't like, think it's, like, specifically Jamel Hill, but it's, like, I believe in what she believes in. I'm still... She's right. I wonder if there'll be enough, like, tweets or pictures or online hashtags, whatever. I, I don't know if it's buying actual... AT&T or those not those businesses buying, are so big, you can't... No, you can't. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right, exactly. right. I mean, I, no one's going to stop AT&T. I don't think it's so much actual, like, oh, I'm not going to use AT&T. It's just... Rabble rousers creating noise and calling that Bad that PR bothers and, them. It's yeah. like yeah. that that may, may not be bottom line, but that PR does play a factor. And like I said, we whenever we do something that remotely affects an advertiser, we hear about it. And that's well, that's and, one and, one millionth of the and size what of sucks ESPN. for them. Like AT and T is now being lumped on the other side of things. You know what I mean? Like, AT right. not like. We're, you know, <laughs> like, on the it. right. Yeah, right. It's almost like, like we're just like, trying to get, right. like, to have right. a good cell phone. We like advertise the tiki with torches the, with, right. the, with the Like we the advertise Nazis. with the NFL, and now we're like, right. well, why are we getting punished? Right. Like, so, so it, that's it, they're going to get a lot of, I mean, not just backlash from Trump of his tweets, but like those big businesses are going to be like, we got to do something about this. Yeah. Like, figure out a solution. And so it's uh, it, the players are coming around to that solution with the world's just going to. And speaking of around and around, we go. The real big story. This would be the big story any other day. Yeah is you fucking Minnesota people. Mm. And let me tell you something. I like Minnesota. I want to be on the record as a Vikings fan growing up. This I want is to disingenuous. This is Anthony Carter. Fake news. Uh, the Four Horsemen. Uh, Fran Tarkington. You know there's a big butt uh, coming. Kevin McHale. Uh, Kevin Garnett, thank you. Uh, the North Stars. All of it. Big, big, big. Hey, Frankie, who's that guy at that golf tournament? The North Star. That everyone, like, freaked out about. Who? 
No, old school. I'd have to look it up. It was such a random, like, Just old Google school. the most yeah. famous North Star of them all. Anyways, during Monday Night Football, the Vikings scored a touchdown. Kyle Rudolph, side note on the waiting list for Team Portnoy. Um, they, he scored, what? Big country. Big country. He's on the waiting list. He, he'll get in. Um, they play Duck, Duck, Goose. If Kyle Rudolph has any self-respect, he will rescind his name from that list. You're, you're just deciding whether or not you're like de- deliberating on him. It's like getting into a very exclusive country yeah, no, club. I would be like, he will uh, get in. Thank you, but I'm no, out. Uh, we don't do mass inductions, Kevin. It's uh, one if I ever heard Kevin Hayes has no self-respect for himself. If if Kyle Rudolph hears this and he's like, I'm on your waiting list, and he just sits around. We waiting, have a lot of people who want to get in. We have a lot of people who want. You just don't. I mean, you don't just don't say, Hey, I want in. Oh, you're in. No, we do induction ceremonies. It's like a frat, like old school. We throw the, the okay, thing on your head and drive it around. Behind each other's What's that? A lot of history behind it. Yeah. You just don't, oh, I'm in, you're in? No. 15-year-old Steve Not just surprised. got his shirt. We just inducted 15-year-old I, Steve. I hung up on him the other day. It was great. Was I, I wasn't there. Yeah, you clearly. weren't there. And he was doing like rah-rah. And I was like, I, I got to do it to you. You don't, if you induct everybody instantly, you induct nobody. That's Dave, how it I, was uh, Lou Nan. Lou Nan. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Huge Lou Nan. You know. Yeah. yeah. Legend. Classic. He is Lou. a legend. He legend is, Lou. You don't say Lou Nan's name with disrespect. <laughs> yeah. I never would. We played this golf tournament and he showed up and the whole place was like, Lou Nan's here. Lou Nan <laughs> is the king of Minnesota. Oh, yeah. You know Lou Nan? Nan. Lou Nan <laughs> is the king of Minnesota. So I am a big Minnesota gang. Well, it was cheap, cheap skin pizza. It was great. Super Bowl is there, we're gonna have a party. I love these people, they're good. No, you Salt don't. of the earth, free lake. What, what are the lakes? Lake, Win- lake Minnetoga. Are we just gonna say everything about Minnesota? They have these parties the on duck, Lake Minnetoga. So Kyle Rudolph. On. He's piling on the Minnesota knowledge now. Kyle Rudolph. You're just running up the score, pal. Kyle Rudolph, who, it, it, I love Kyle Rudolph. Duck, duck, goose, they're going around, he hits them. They all get, he, he goosed somebody and the whole fucking team gets up and they're banging into each other digs. It was the worst execution of Duck, Duck, Goose of all time. Fine, they don't know how to play Duck, Duck, Goose. Egregious. I tweeted it out, and all of a sudden, all these Minnesota people, who are the most agreeable, easygoing people in the world, are like, it's called... Uh, duck, 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 Gray Duck. Duck, Duck, Gray Duck. And they're adamant about it. They're like, it's not Duck, Duck, Goose, it's Duck, Duck, Gray, gray Duck. And then I'm getting all these gifts, and they're, they're the only state in this whole fucking country who, who have called Duck, Duck, Goose... Duck, duck, gray duck. Do you happen to know the backstory? I, what a question from the man in the Astro shirt, which was <laughs> ugly to wear that today, to use your term, ugly. Um, you should have worn it yesterday. Today it's just rubbing it in and dancing on grace. I like it. Um, yes. According to the Minnesotians, as legend has it, the duck, duck, goose things like never happened. There is a gray duck who was born and everyone points at the gray duck because he's not white and like, you stink, you're gross, you're weak, you're not good. And they pick on the gray duck. Mm. And then they push the gray duck and the gray duck runs around and he flaps his wings. He's a majestic duck. And he dominates and catches and he's faster and stronger and more nimble and bigger dick than all the other ducks. Well, they appropriated that from the ugly duckling, first of all. It also sounds like Rudolph. Yeah. The yeah. red-nosed reindeer. Sounds like a, Minnesota young people, they, they won't fight for anything. They'll fight that this thing should be caught. Like, um, they came I mean, out of the woodwork. It just is, it sounds so terrible. Duck, duck, goose. It flows. It's a name. It's a thing. Duck, duck, gray duck. It's a mouthful. It's no imagination. It stinks. It's a it stupid name. It's... Although, huge miss by Minnesota. If they are this passionate about the gray duck, mm. The, instead of the Minnesota Wild, the Wild is one of the worst nicknames, worst uniforms I've ever seen. The Wild what? The Minnesota Gray Ducks. Such a hockey thing, you know? God, like, that's the Gray Duck. Like, Anything. A, a majestic Anything. Gray Duck on a green sweater? Mm-hmm. Forget about Hunter it. Hunter Green, too. Hunter that's, Green. Hunter Green. Forest, gray maybe. Gray Duck. Maybe Forest Green. I can live with Forest Green. Yeah. Center ice, just gray ducks around the circle. Well, no, I feel like it should be like the white ducks and then one gray duck that's like se- like separating out. Not all gray ducks. I'd like all gray ducks. You could do a big the whole circle thing is that thing where everybody gray circles duck. up, all the fans no, but it's the gray ears. ducks. Yeah, I hear you. Well, yeah, why would we go Forest Green if they're the gray ducks? Probably should have went gray. Gray well, uniforms? The, the, the duck has how would the gray. gray duck stick out? You can't have gray on gray. The duck will get lost. It's a, it's a gray duck. You can't have a gray shirt. He's right. In the background, yeah. He's right. There's no other way to put it. He's just right. You're wrong. (laughs) Big enough to admit it. (laughs) Baseball playoffs, a lot of shit happened last night. Um, 
Let's just first start with my betting recap, which I know people like. I had the Red Sox. I had the over, lost that by a combined two runs. It was 10 was the over, they lost 5-4. I had the Nats, they lost 2-1. to one. Then I got shut out of the Yankees in the over because I was at Hofstra and they had no service. And then I got too big of a pussy and I wanted to take the Dodgers. So I didn't win any, anything, typical. Uh, I was also the victim of two horrific baseball managerial decisions. The Red Sox won, you can go back and forth. I think Kimbrell should have started um, the eighth and they probably win that game. But Dusty Baker. The worst. What? To take out your and, Max and Scherzer. With, uh, by the way, they have a dog mess bullpen. There is people like hindsight's 2020. Scherzer's banged up. He wasn't going to go over 100 pitches. It's the fucking playoffs. It's and it's playoffs. Max Scherzer. It's he's Max a, Scherzer. He's a horse. horse. He's unbelievable. unbelievable. Your bullpen stinks. stinks. He was cruising. cruising. No, hitter, no hitter. And Dusty Baker one strikes. Hit. You gave him one hit. One hit, right. I mean, that is, don't give me hindsight's 2020 nonsense. I had foresight on that one. Leave him in. And you never would have thought that Dusty Baker would be the guy that brings him out I know, early. Right. Like you always think he's going to be the late guy. Because I've been on both sides of this. I had Dusty Baker when he tried to kill Scherzer. Remember that game, Nate? When he tried to kill Scherzer? Yeah, he went 119 pitches and he couldn't throw a strike and his arm fell off and he was still pitching. In this game, he takes him out after one hit. I can't believe Scherzer, reaction. you know, Scherzer's a maniac. He's like a gamer. I didn't see it. Did he freak out when he uh, got yeah, taken I, out? I think he just kind of came out. I was surprised he didn't, like, put up a fight, you know? Happy birthday, so, Nate. Yeah, 29. 29. And more importantly, he paid off all his student loans. Looking 20 dead free. Thank you. I feel like you're on an upswing. It's just yeah, always oh yeah. in a good mood. Things are coming up. I mean, spider monkeys, like, contained. I just realized that I'm a really, really good blogger, so I'm just going to do really, really good blogs and not worry about the rest of the bullshit, and it's paid off. Hey. Hey, man. You know what? The dog, you man. That's, lane, some, that's some fucking... Like, no more Nate and Nate Oh, and shout out to Chaps for doing the best blogs on the internet right now. Everything he writes is fantastic. Look at this. This is a love fest in here. Here we go. I'm feeling <laughs> good now. <laughs> I mean, company is on the up and up, Wait, man. what about me? Uh, you do amazing videos. that get, like, hundreds of thousands of views what, what on me? Facebook every day. Thank you. And Dave is in meetings 24-7 to take us to the moon. No days off. No Thank days you. off. This is... What's the opposite of a spider monkey? A butterfly. A lemur. Butterfly Nate. A lemur. That's really cute. Oh, butterfly too. Nate. Gibbons are very, very friendly. Are we talking primates. about baseball? Scherzer, did he care that he was taken out? I mean, yeah, he doesn't like being taken out when he's at like 150 pitches. But the thing about yesterday was like a no-win situation because they had no, planned for him to. They had he still like kind of banged up, so they had planned for him not to go over 100. <laughs> you could have won. Just, There's a game just, that you like, win if, or lose. If he had given up like five, six, seven hits at that point, and then he was pulled at 98 pitches, and the score was the same, everybody like, oh, okay, yeah, that's but fine. It, but, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Right, one were drastically different. Right, but I'm saying at the same like pitch a, count. A basically, a the same perfect score. game. It's just the fact that he had the no hitter to that point. But the plan was all. But that's along. not like a little detail. The problem detail. is Dusty that's put like in. A big I mean, that means that's a guy that was cruising. Right. Dusty put in the wrong guy, and then instead of walking Rizzo and bringing in like the best matchup possible, he just pitches to him with our fifth fucking. 39-year-old uh, Rivera just like All right, well, that whatever, gets us whatever. to Rizzo and his respect and going me, crazy. which I thought, I like Anthony Rizzo. I tell this story a lot. I saw him in Vegas. I was playing blackjack. I was a little higher limit table than he was. Um, and he came up. He's like, hey, Dave, nice to see you. It's like, all right, go back to the uh, $5 table. So I'm playing here. But we like Anthony Rizzo. He's a great dude. But this respect me thing, he that ball, I don't know how, that ball is caught by a high school team. That was like a sky high pop up. So I don't know how you yell respect me. Who, by the way, who's up after Rizzo? Uh, is it like Contreras or something? And then, I don't know. I just I don't asked know. you. Yeah, apparently. I don't follow the Cubs that close. But, did you uh, watch the game? I did. I don't follow the Nats. I do. Not the Cubs. It was like the Contreras guy, who apparently is not great. Doesn't, isn't Rizzo, what's Rizzo hitting that lineup? Three? I, I wouldn't Two know. or I mean, three. I, I Can someone look up fucking something for me? Sports. They, I am, imagine they got a pretty good guy behind him. Whatever. Whatever the case may be, him screaming respect me. I mean, he should have been walked. That's why. It doesn't matter that he the had logic a, it does matter. matter. The principle, you, though. The principle of it is yeah, should have been walked. You don't, listen, you, don't, it is, you don't talk shit on principle. You know what I mean? Eh, you talk okay shit when you, when you... You have when to you, hit that to the moon right. to talk When you shit. show people up, when you do something cocky. I don't know. I feel like if you're in the moment and Good you players hit make, a walk-off right. type of hit... I agree with that, but he then he doubled down in his post game and was like, I, I can't believe they pitched to me. Like they need I to do think me. good play. I think it don't pitch to me right there, to be honest. Uh, I love this situation. Like in 1993, Sid Bream slides into home and he says, respect me, I'm the fastest guy in the league. You gotta believe him. Sid Bream. Yeah. Shout out, chaps. <laughs> Um, 
It's crazy to yell that. You have to at least say, I can't believe they pitched me. I got lucky, and that's karma for pitching to me. Something to that effect. Yeah, you just... you just. Who was the guy who... who Otis Nixon. Yeah. Oh, was, he was born at I 90. I love Otis Nixon, He was man. born Remember at when, 90 years when old. He went, when he disappeared <laughs> last year, yeah, that was one of my was, favorite stories of so all time. I was so nervous when he, when he was coming on. My, my Nana was, like, distraught. <laughs> She's a huge Braves fan. <laughs> um, all right, that's a rundown. We got a couple from KFC. You got a big fight. Tommy G. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Gabagool. <laughs> I, I've been, uh, it's a coming out party for Yankees fans this year. I think people are finally realizing just how big of a fucking asshole fan base they are. Somebody they're so, remembering, they're remembering. Yeah, right, they're remember- yeah, because the Yankees are kind of coming, know. I think Yankees are, are kind of coming back to the forefront a little bit. Uh, and so everybody has kind of been joining in playing Where's Waldo with me, He's tweeting out screenshots of people at the game. Somebody sw- sent me this picture, Tommy G, and I, and I retweeted it and I called him Prison Mike because he looked exactly like Prison Mike and a little bit of Date Mike. From the office, I have no, I had no idea who this guy was. Turns out he's Michael Rappaport's co-host on the Fantasy Follies podcast, which we own. So he's like a co-worker, and he went berserk. I think I saw a screen cap of him saying he was going to cancel the podcast. Or yeah, like pull the podcast. Yeah, he was basically like, I'm ready to like burn this bridge. Like fuck Barstool, I don't need this. I don't need this show. The Has best Rappaport part. like I, I have not seen publicly him anything. commented on Tommy G. No. The best part is that. He doesn't realize that now, because of if he just let it go, nobody's gonna remember the prison Mike joke. But now he will be prison Mike forever. <laughs> Nobody Mike. would remember the prison Mike. Is that such a harmless comparison? Yeah, yeah, it's right. almost not even like disrespectful. That's yeah. not a bad one at all. Yeah. And so he went. He tweeted me from midnight to 6:30 in the morning. Were you awake? No. I woke up at 6:30 to him like, "Wake up, you bitch!" Like going <laughs> crazy. I mean, uh, I, I swear, it must have been 30, Tommy. It must have been 30 Tom, tweets. Tommy G. Tommy G. Tommy I, 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 I And then like, he DM'd like. me on, he makes Rico Bosco look like level-headed. That's impossible. I, Dave, he, he DM'd me, said, I would rather die as a man than live as a pussy over a prison mic joke. <laughs> He's crazy. Well, he was like, I, he goes, I will not be a prop. I will not be a punchline or a joke. Chaps said it best. He's like, "Yes, you will be. You will be my problem. You will be a joke. Yeah. I will continue not talking be about you. That you currently are. Yeah, you can't un- you can't unring that bell, the, so to speak. The irony of you you fucking internet tough guy, keyboard gangster. You've been up for seven hours tweeting me, Tommy G. <laughs> Tommy G. <laughs> and so he is exactly what Yankee fans are. Yankee fans, when you look in the mirror, you're seeing Tommy G. That is. This is the fucking. The idiot Gindaloon that represents you guys. That is still why it's quite stunning that Rico Bosco affiliates himself as a Mets fan. Yeah, I almost don't want him. You know, it's like just you're born to be a Yankee fan. Go be a Yankee fan. Rico Bosco is not going to like that. I have Rico Bosco's back. He is a salt of the earth team Portland guy. He's also waiting the official induction uh, induction into the Hall. You're never going to put him in. No, I will. The only thing about my guys is. You can't be everybody's guys. Like, I know he's a huge Big Cat guy. He's a huge Hank guy. You can like people, but there can't when be... When you ca- say guy, it's, that's got to be a one thing. Like when, a one when there's a knife sitting on the ground, and there's a bunch of people around, you got to know who you're stabbing right So away. if you had three of the blogs, like Hank, Big Cat, you, what percentage they got to click yours first? Right, 100. Able- oh. Dave wants straight monogamy with his guys. You can't, you can't have anybody When, when there's a war that breaks out, you don't doubt like what armor you're putting on. That's mm-hmm. really what it comes down to. There's like three shields and three swords. It's like, oh, it's important. It's not even a doubt. You just push the other stuff aside. And you're like, 15-year-old Steve goes to school in my armor. Yeah. Bryce Harper goes to school in my armor. Za, Za. Frankie Borelli, Young Page Views, they go to school in my armor. That's what we need from Team Portland. And there's no shame in not being part of Team Portland, but it is an honor. It's like, I want to actually brand people. Um, last one, more of a serious note, a shout out. Not a lot of news about this. The best meal I've ever had in my life. Number one food experience in my life, Signorello in Napa Valley. Just burned to the ground, literally. Like, total flames. I don't know if people are paying attention to these wild uh, fires mm-hmm. out there. Super sad. I'm not. I'm more focused on if players are kneeling or not. I am more focused now on these wildfires. And it is sad shit, like beautiful vineyard. And I guess it's, you know, there's bigger issues than like a beautiful vineyard and winery being burned to the ground. But it's sad to see, man. Yeah, that's those people's livelihoods. So. Yeah. So it, it is weird. It looks like a lot of times the grapes, the vines, the it's weird. It almost looks like uh, 
the, the grapes are too powerful. Like the fire gets right up to the orchard and stop because there's something with the sto soil at this point where the fire can't thrive and it's almost like they're hitting a force field, but still ravaged. Very sad, very sad stuff. So shout out to Napa, which is probably one to two favorite places on earth for me. Isn't it crazy that like we can't put out the fire? It is crazy. It's just like fire yeah, still is like- Side by side pictures of like the town that was there and now the it's before just like and after. So sad, yeah, it's so insane. sad. So shout out to all those people going through all that shit. Very sad shit. Um, a lot of shits. A lot of shits. Anything else? Post show? Did shout you want to talk Astros, about that? Man. Did you want to talk to about and yeah, the your Red Sox are Jets? dead. Dude. Sorry. Sad, I mean, they, they dragged me back in to kick me in the fucking nuts. Uh, I think they should have started Kimbrell. It would have been very difficult to win that game in Houston. The Astros, listen, you play some teams, you grow to hate them. I actually don't hate the Astros. They're a good team, too. I good mean, team. Like, it's not like you lost some chumps. I don't, root again. I don't not like Houston people. Texas is probably the most like obnoxious of yeah. them all. Um, Tex screaming suck my dick every time, like, you know, took a one-out walk, and he's like, suck my dick! Yeah. So good much. Yeah. But, I mean, the Astros are a very good team. And we got game five is going to be an interesting game. I mean, that game's up for grabs, There's Yankees, Indians. Lifelong Astros fan, you must be pumped. I'm very pumped. Yeah, very excited. Do you going think the Yankees going to win this game? I think they could, yeah. So I think they're going to win it, too. So yeah, I kind of hope they do. I think we have an easier shot to go through the Astros. Than, oh, yeah. All right. So I, I mean, I'll, the I'll allow easier that. for the Yankees than the Indians. I mean, the Indians are, like, a far superior team. I have a weird so question. Annoying. If, if Joe Girardi had fucking challenged that, they, you know. Weird Indians question for you, Kevin. Although Kluber's so good, I can't see him throwing two eggs up and get in a row. I will say this. I hate the Yankees. You don't want the Yankees to win, but it's a lot of fun to watch them lose. So it's yep. like fun when they're in the mix. Like they are a team yeah, that's like, yeah, okay, definitely. I'm gonna watch. Yes, you just I, don't want them to I, win. Right, like I, if I could somehow see in the future that they're definitely gonna lose, sure. Right. But I need these motherfuckers out as soon as possible. I don't want to play with fire and I can't yeah. have them, like God forbid, making a serious run in like the World that. Series right now. They're gonna be so good when they couple some of these young dudes with like Bryce Harper. What are you gonna do when that happens? What are you doing Team Portnoy's on the fucking Yankees? Team Portnoy thinks he's pretty confident in his inside knowledge because yeah. Team Portnoy, until, uh, there are no secrets within Team Portnoy. I hear that, until, until like the Yankees do the like unthinkable, give him a $500 million contract. Or when they sign Manny Machado or something. Do you Yankees think those are good. things that haven't been bantied about the Stanton dinner table there. and just a Team Portnoy gala? I don't even, if, I swear to God, Mike Stanton, Stanton, Mike Stanton is on We need to have a gala. Him. Imagine that. That would team kill me. Gollas. Having having judge hit behind secret him. locations, oh my God. secret ceremonies. That would actually kill me. Secret sacrifices. Tommy G, he would kill me. Tommy G's like how cocky he would be if Mike Stanton was on the fucking Yankees. Like, like have Robbie Fox like a pig over the table and just missed, drip blood. I miss Giancarlo Stanton though. That's the run. What? Game, I guess. Oh wait, he went back. Yeah, no, I I, I was I just say Mike because I. Know. This is not good television. <laughs>